Hello and welcome. Um, I, I believe that I'm live. I, my camera was uh, not obeying my wishes and it kept on asking me to go live in portrait, which I didn't want to do. So it took me a minute there. But uh, welcome everyone to tonight's uh, portrait painting demo. Let me see if the image looks straight. Yep, that looks pretty good. Uh, and I, hopefully my, my sound is good. I have to remember to get very close to the mic on the phone. Otherwise, uh, the sound quality ends up being pretty poor. But I see that there's already a few people here, four people. So I am just going uh, to get started. If anyone can uh, text, write in a comment to let me know if you can hear me OK, that would be great. And um, let me fix the lighting a little. Always helps. Yep, I think that that looks pretty good. Great. And so I usually start um, by measuring here. This is a, a nine by twelve panel. The model's name is uh, Turksy. I don't know what if that's just a nickname or that's actually his name. But um, I, and actually, I should have let him know that I was doing. Uh, his demo tonight. I've been pretty good about letting people know before I start. So, um, oh well, that's, uh, he's just going to have to watch it later. <laughs> so I'm just mixing up a little bit of uh, color to start the lay-in, just sort of a, a neutral, maybe in this case towards an orangey color because that is the predominant color, but that will um, get painted over anyway. So just a little bit of measuring. This is where the apex of his hair is. It's about um, not very far off the edge. So I just try to get some of my major landmarks in. And OK. I hear that the sound quality is OK, but I still have to remember to keep uh, my voice loud. As I get comfortable, my the 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 pitch of my voice and the volume tend to drop off a little bit. I've rewatched some of my videos where it almost seems like I'm just whispering, um, which is sort of unfortunate. I've had to uh, re-edit some of my videos where I go back and I increase the sound by three or four times, which is gives you an idea of how quiet the sound was on some of those videos. I think partially that my the cover of my phone um, does cover up the sound holes to the microphone on the phone, so I've taken the 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 phone cover off this time. Hopefully that'll um, that'll be helpful. And just uh, very quickly um, drawing, although I I'm not measuring right now. I'm just trying to get a a feel of his head, but. Sometimes I find that I'm wildly off so that it helps to then go back and remeasure. I tend to paint more women than men, and that's just because uh, of the app that I use to get my resource images um, sketchy. There's maybe 10 times as many um, women posting to the app than men. I think more women do take um, selfies in general. Hopefully that's not a gross um, stereotype, but um, but in this case on Sketchy, it seems to uh, play out that there's many more uh, women on there, young women taking pictures of themselves. Um, okay, just getting the base of his chin. It's His chin is in... Uh, a little bit in shadow there, and then the, um, and then it's casting a shadow. So that's all going to become one unified shape. We just get a sense of it there. Get a little bit of the design of his beard there. And I, I know for a fact that I've painted the ear too low. I can just tell. Let's see. Oh, 
Well, that's right on, but I think the ear is too long. So let me check that out too. The tip of his ear to the top of the panel. It's right about there. So um, it helps me to get somewhat of uh, the landmarks, but I don't spend a lot of time on drawing. There's a lot of artists that, um, oh, I just saw a flash of lightning, I think. There's a lot of artists that um, they get a very um, precise drawing before they go into the painting. Uh, it's typical of schools in Europe, like uh, the Florence Academy, that they, they'll do a very uh, tight drawing on paper or on vellum, and then they'll um, transfer that drawing onto a canvas and then start the painting from there. It um, And that technique goes back uh, uh, several hundred years um, from, you know, towards the end of the Renaissance and still is practiced in many academies today. There's a, a sort of a la prima school of painting, which looks at more just going right into the paint, not spending so much time in drawing, but try to get sort of generalized forms down first and then um, adjusting the painting as you work. And then also, um, painting wet into wet paint, meaning color mixing right on the the panel or the canvas also. That's a little bit different than a traditional technique, which would be to do a, a, a grisal, a, um, a, a neutral or gray version of the painting, letting that dry and then come over with washes or glazes to bring in the color. And uh, that's uh, almost the opposite uh, idea of, a, of an a la prima painting, where you're just, um, with each brush stroke, you're going for to, to get the color that's, that's there. OK, so. That gives me sort of the sense of his head. Let me, the base of his nose is somewhat hidden from it with his hand, but I still want to know where it is. Yep, that, I have it pretty close to the right place. Let me come in, start to come in with some of the more accurate color. So I'm putting a little bit of alizarin crimson mixed with black. I may bring in a little bit of the, the dioxazine purple to shift it a little bit. Because there uh, seems to be a little bit of a hint of purple in the shadows. And so I can uh, use that as an excuse to bring in a little bit more color. I um, One of the things that I'm trying to do tonight is that um, I find that I generalize and take a long time to get to the finished painting, that, it, that I just um, put down some fairly, some strokes that are just um, not very accurate, but just trying to get a sense of it. And then I spend a lot of time adjusting uh, those strokes to get it to look like the finish, how I want it to be in the finished painting. And what I, I think what I want to try tonight is to try to get um, some of those finished strokes down much earlier, try to really hone in on the, the color and the value that that's there and, and the placement and just get it, try to get it as much the first time around as I can. Not quite yet. I'm still trying. I'm still getting um, some of the drawing down, but once I get past the initial drawing, um, then I will try to be very accurate about the brush strokes. And it may seem like I'm painting very slowly, but I think in the end, the painting will come around much faster because I'll have to do far less um, uh, altering of the painting. What's going to slow me down here tonight is probably the, the hand. There's a, 
quite a bit of, of color and value change in his fingertips and to get that to feel right might take a little while. In fact, I'm already starting to put in some of the negative shapes that are in the hand and that if I am accurate enough with that, that will um, help speed the, the um, rendering of the hand. So, so you can see that negative shape that's along the side of his face. I just have to make sure that I have it in right in relationship to the base of his nose. And then um, at the same time, really start to think about where the placement of the fingers are. So I have the pinky coming out over here and then down. My monitor isn't quite as uh, tall as the, the image. And I like to work uh, sight size. Um, quickly, what sight size is, is that your reference is uh, the same size in your sight as the, the painting or the panel. And typically that's done by making, measuring it and making it the same size and being the same distance away from both the, the subject and your painting so that you can quickly compare the two. It's also possible to do the painting sort of as a proportion of the reference, and that requires uh, quite a bit more uh, measuring because you have to measure the relative size and proportion of everything in the painting as you're putting it down. Whereas when you're working site size, you just, you can measure directly. Everything has the same distance from as the reference as in the painting itself. So if I measure the width of the nose, for example, the width of the nose is going to be the same here. I don't have to say that the width of the nose is a is a quarter of the width of his face and do those kind of measurements, um, which I do find a little bit tedious, but um, it is um, sometimes necessary if you're working very large or working very small and, and to do those kind of measurements. Okay, I am, um, I am gonna jump ahead. I am, let me see if I can find the right brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up uh, the half tone, what's called the half tone color of his face. Uh, that's that brush is just a little bit too soft for me. Let me see if I can find uh, something else. I know that my voice is dropping off a little bit here just because I'm not as close to the to the microphone, but I'll move back in a second. Oh, I found it. So this is a um, it was a filbert brush, which has sort of a rounded, um, a, a little bit pointier tip. But, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's gotten a little bit worn down, and so now it's a little bit rounder. Some of my filbert brushes tend to get very pointy over time just because I wear them down on the, on the panel. But this one still has a bit of roundness to it, and it has enough stiffness for what I'm about to do right now. So I am, you can't see my palette, but I'm mixing up a fair amount of of permanent orange, naphthal red. I may throw in a little bit of um, alizarin permanent and a touch of white. I mean, right now it's just like a, a pure bright tomato-y color. So I, I do want to uh, soften it a little bit with white because I can see I need the value a little bit lighter. And maybe I'll just throw in a little bit of, of yellow to to round it out a little bit. Okay, so I think I may need to go a little bit lighter than that. As I add white to this color, which is sort of a an orangey red, it's going to shift the, the hue a little bit because the white has a cooling effect on the color and makes it, brings it closer to the red than the orange. So then I have to go back and mix a little bit of yellow back in. And in fact, instead of adding white, I could have just been adding yellow to lighten it, but that would have shifted it uh, much further to the yellow. So I think just a touch lighter, so a bit of yellow, a bit more white, and 
I don't want to go too light because um, I want to be able to hit these um, highlights here that are on the face and on his finger the um, to really get those to kind of sparkle or to jump out the flesh tones around it have to be significantly darker but I think this is a good um, good value to start with and I maybe do want to go slightly redder and um, so this is a different slightly different approach than I usually take and I'm just trying it out to see if um, see if I like it better um, like I, what I usually do is I start with a small area and I work laying um, colored brush stroke next to colored brush stroke, um, working away from a particular spot until I've built out the whole painting like a little um, puzzle. And in this case, I'm just filling up this area that's in light with um, one just about one color. I may go a little bit lighter as I go up here because I already know that that needs to be quite a bit lighter. And now I can start thinking about um, where the fingers are coming into his face. In fact, I'll just put in um, some, indica some indications of white just to help me visualize where that is. That's nowhere near the color that it needs to be, but, um, and this comes, his fingers, um, the thickness of his fingers are coming out off the edge of the panel here. I'm really, in this case, I'm starting to use the paint to um, create that sense of form, just the smeariness of the paint going over the dark values in the negative space are already starting to create that uh, sense of shape of the fingers. And if I can, if I can visualize it and paint it quickly, that's uh, even better. Hands are one of those things that's that can be very difficult to to master, and takes a huge amount of patience because of all of the small shapes and placements that make up the, the delicate um, the delicate architecture, the delicate anatomy of the, of the hand. When you look at a hand that, um, I, I'll refer a lot to John Singer Sargent because he's one of my, um, one of the painters that I, I look to for ideas for, he's a, a master at the type of painting that I do. And if you're not familiar with John Singer Sargent, um, run, don't walk to your nearest uh, Google Chrome browser and type in um, John Singer Sargent and start looking at, especially his portraiture. He was um, maybe the world's most famous uh, portrait artist. And, and there's a reason why. <laughs> it's because his... Um, his brushwork is just out of this world. Okay, so um, what was I saying about John Singer Sargent? Um, hands, that's right, hands. Uh, that's my, I, I segued um, or went on a tangent too far away and I forgot where, what I was talking about. Okay, so hands. So if you look at the hands in his paintings, they're very deceptive because it looks like he's painted his, the hands all in maybe five or six brush strokes, um, maybe similar to some of the hands that Velazquez, Diego Velazquez, um, the um, the 18th century, I think it was, 18th century painter, and um, he painted the uh, the royals of the Spanish court. And his, everyone sort of looked at him that became sort of this new school of alla prima painting. Um, when I say new school from the, in the 19th century, they looked to his work as a guide to how to paint. And, and it's because he painted with such a economy, but at the same time, a certain amount of, of 
realism that just things just jumped off of the canvas looked so real and but then you get up close to the paintings and it all dissolves into um, just a, a mess of of, bre of wild brushwork and uh, it's it took a long time for people to figure out how I don't think people actually have ever figured out how he did it but um, well, I think it started raining I thought I was hearing uh, someone running a faucet or something but now I've usually I, I cover up all my windows it's so that the light doesn't change as I'm painting, but I have uh, the side window open tonight and um, and letting a little bit of the cool air in feels nice. So all the, all these um, forms right now, the shapes I've, that I've painted are, are rather flat because I'm just using this one color right now. I'm going to be painting the light side of his face, the dark side of his face, and um, and then I'm going to start modulating the, the forms from there. But I'm going to move a little quicker to get some of this uh, color down. Yeah, I got a little distracted and I started painting the wrinkles in his uh, head. And that isn't um, where I really want to be quite yet. Get a little bit of his hair. I'm going to add a little bit of purple to the ivory black to give it that kind of um, that cool undertone that it has and I'm not going to um, deviate too far from the photo um, I I can be faulted a little bit for copying the photo maybe a little bit too much um, whereas I know a lot of artists like to invent more from from the photo I, I try to get the, my reference to be fairly close to how I want to paint it, and then I do pretty much try to match as much as I can of, of what is in the photo. Because for me, it's more, about, it's more of a, a learning exercise, trying to figure out how to paint it, um, than trying to make any kind of uh, finished or gallery level work. I'm just sort of trying to learn as I go. And, and for me, it's a little bit easier if I know where I'm going. And that's and that means the, the photo is fairly resolved to the way I want it. And, I, and sometimes I do a fair amount of manipulation in Photoshop to get the uh, photo to where I want it. Okay, already I'm starting to poke and play around, but I want to get a little bit more of his beard in. And the question is how to paint the beard where there's uh, his flesh visible through the hairs in the beard. And I don't want to be painting every hair, so I'm going to avoid that where possible. And. So I, I need to come up with ways of painting larger and smaller color shapes that will approximate the feeling of the of those individual hairs that we can see his skin through. So his chin's feeling a little bit long, and that's partially because of the way that I have it drawn, and I'm not really delineating the shadow. And the shadow has quite a bit of... Um, sort of a purpley blue in it. So I'm going to try to just add a touch of white in there so that I can get the, those colors to come through a little bit. Get a little bit more purple on the brush. The dioxazine purple, that is a extremely strong color. So um, you have to be a little bit careful about how how strongly you use that because it can really be a difficult color to overcome if you um, if you made the color too strong or too dark and you try to lighten it or change the color that purple is you almost have to wipe it off the panel to really get it to to read as a to come out as a different color 
Oh, um, Megan says that my voice is sexy. So, well, thank you. I, I, I was thinking it's a little bit raspy. Uh, usually if I, if I have a sinus infection, which I don't have right now, then, um, then my, the register of my voice, um, does get much, much lower. And, um, I think it does start to sound a little bit sexy, like, um, when, when it's like that, but a little bit just before I lose my voice, I think after a cold, but, um, just trying to, um, be, try to get more comfortable in my own skin as I do these live demos. I think the first one that I did, I was um, just a little bit, uh, I don't know. I, I didn't even announce it because I was so worried that it was I was going to have all these technical problems and not be able to do a good painting. So I just went ahead and went live without um, announcing it first. But as I'm getting more comfortable doing them, I just... Um, just try to advertise a little bit first and let my Instagram followers know that I'm doing it and get them involved in uh, choosing the subject matter. And so the most uh, people so far, let me see, there's six, uh, six people with us right now, but I think over the length of the demo, usually there's about 30 or 40 people that, um, that come come in and out over the video. <clears throat> okay, so I can start to see where, um, which is sort of a good thing, where my painting differs from the photo, because that gives me places where I can start to correct and change the the colors, the values, the placements, the drawing, so that it. Um, then gets much quicker, closer to what it is that I want. And that's sort of what I'm talking about, how to speed things up a little bit tonight, is just um, find those differences and correct them and be as accurate as I can about those corrections. So I'm going to get in a little bit of that um, bright blue in the background to differentiate the background from his, his head. That's a very strong color. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to hit it, but I'm going to try. Uh, try to keep enough blue in that, um, in this case, um, ultramarine blue with a little bit of white in it. And then his hairline is coming down around there and then we have his forehead which then drops around and I have this greenish gray I don't know if it's really greenish but it's a very neutral color in the background here that's a little bit lighter than it is but that may work um, to our advantage okay great Okay, and again, his hair alongside his forehead, uh, there's flesh tones coming through in his skin, and I'll still have to figure out how I am going to go about painting that. It's a little bit of a mystery still. Okay, and I want to hit some of the darks in his ears. Usually that's a almost a pure um, alizarin permanent that's what alizarin permanence for, for these kind of colors, very uh, dark reds. And there's a little bit of um, black. And yes, I, I have black in my palette. I know a lot of people don't, are taught either not to use black, but maybe don't even know why, or um, don't use it out of um, various principles and um, color choices. I use it because it, it serves some specific purposes in my in my palette and how I paint and it allows me to get certain effects that I wouldn't be able to get otherwise and so I uh, depend on it quite a bit. Okay, so I can cut, start cutting in that shape. 
let's just get this down quickly. I know what I want it to be, so I'm just going to get it in. I'm really looking for some of those uh, sort of visual spatial effects out of the paint um, as early as I can. And that um, the style of painting that I'm doing a la prima really lends itself to blurring of edges and doing things that look kind of photographic. And, uh, but the, um, the risk is um, over blending is something that can kind of make a painting look um, like it's missing life or something. And so I, you have to be careful the panel that you don't overdo it. So there's tension between his forehead and where his eyes are. His brow is a little bit furrowed and then the, the pressure from his fingers pushing his skin even more so against that do, does create these, this area of tension. So I wanna just indicate it a little bit right now but then I'm going to work on that more because that really is the focal point of the painting. And I really do want to get that, um, that feeling, that strained feeling in the skin of the face. I don't quite have his eyes feeling like they're cast down or really in the right direction yet. So I think with just some small modifications, I can get that to read properly. And I'm just going to throw in some of this um, whitest white. This is going to be um, one of the lightest parts of my painting here, besides his fingernails and the diamond in his ear, um, which look to be a little bit um, even whiter or brighter. But I just want to get some of that um, light area of his skin tones in to get a sense of where the forms are and how light I need to go or how dark the the um, flesh tones around it need to be. Get a little bit of the creases around his nose and underneath his eye and just to get a sense of it. Um, but pretty soon I have to start getting very exact. I'm not quite there yet. Just need to get a little bit more of the first pass of the paint in. Got, uh, got the right color there. Maybe a touch more of the warmer red in his lips. You know, when you, you hit the note right, um, and it's only once in a while, when I when I do that when you hit it right it just pops all of a sudden and that is just one of those things that's so gratifying to be able to do that and I it's just like uh, like if you're playing baseball and just really connecting um, the bat with a with a hard pitch you know you just you just feel it come right off your bat and that same thing when you put down one of those brush strokes that just perfectly describe the the direction and the the feeling of the form um that i think that's so the sort of thing that's so so appealing about john singer Sargent's paintings and other a la prima painters that do this particular thing really well is that you look at it and you see a brush stroke you can see the singularity of a brush stroke on the surface of the painting and at the same time, you see that it's perfectly describing the thing that it's meant to describe. It's not a bunch, hundreds of little brush strokes. It's not a brush stroke that's trimmed and repainted or painted over. It's, you can just see it right on the surface. It's, the, it's a brush stroke and it's, it's the thing all at once. And I might, be able to have one or two of those in a painting. Um, John Singer Sargent had them all over his paintings, but then again, when you hear about how he painted, he would put down a brush stroke, and if it wasn't where it, the way he liked, he would 
scrape it off and then he would put down another brush stroke and then he would scrape it off and then at the end of a painting session if he didn't like it at all or or if he was if the part of that painting wasn't complete then he would take the whole thing and then he would rub it down and take out all of the detail and leave just sort of the shadow of the painting there so that when he came to it the next time he could start all over again painting over kind of the ghost of the painting that he had attempted the session before so i think it's really kind of interesting it, it 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 plays on this idea of this sense of immediacy like it was something that the artist just came to the painting he saw what he needed to paint he knew how to do it and he just wham did it in one brush stroke and threw his hands up in the air and said hey i'm done and walks away and that's sort of the impression that we're supposed to have but in reality even the greatest painter at this sort of trick it was uh, um, that it took a hundred swings at a hundred pitches before he had that one that really connected and but the one that made it to the painting the one that we see the the highlight film kind of is just that that one brush stroke i'm um i'm a little bit too what's the word i'm not so interested in wiping down every brush stroke so that i'm leaving just the perfect one um uh, my style is more about just incrementally changing um things that aren't right in the painting until I eventually get to where I want it to be. And the process of doing that is somewhat apparent because I do use a fairly um, big brushes and thick paint. So you see every attempt, every, in a way, every swing of the pitch as I'm doing it. Okay, so um, uh, Megan asks, "Where do where do you get um, your pictures? Are there are they pictures uh, your followers send? Um, very rarely am I using pictures from followers. They're usually um, pictures off of the app Sketchy, which unfortunately is only available on um, on iPhones. And in the app, there uh, people will post." Uh, mostly um, selfies or pictures of their family or sometimes just random pictures. Sometimes they're models and they'll put pictures that photographers have taken of them. And uh, you can go, anyone can go on the app, find photos that they like, and then do a painting from it. And then the idea is that um, the app um, encourages you to post that the finished painting or drawing back to the app and then it actually pairs it with the the original photo so that you can look at the painting or drawing and then look at the photo and then you have profiles more or less like on instagram where you can look at one artist's work or you can look at a feed of of paintings that are of recent paintings that were done and scroll um, back chronologically of from when they were posted and look at uh, um, whole galleries of paintings that way but anyway that is where I, I i there's something called a saved they used to call it the queue which made more sense but uh, and then you would save photos in your queue now you save photos in your saved and um and i have probably a thousand photos in my queue they're ones that i've seen over time that i thought i might do paintings from those um and then there's ones that even though they're in my queue i probably will never paint them just because there are so many other photos that i would prefer to paint <clears throat> before before I paint that one so I know I'm just never going to get to to some of those or there may be some aspect of it even though I liked the overall feeling of the photo uh, it's it's lacking some aspect maybe it's not high quality enough or there isn't enough definition or light and shadow or 
or something or the photo's too distorted or some some piece of it that I um, that I don't like it enough to do a painting from it and so but I do have a large number of photos and I um, hold on a second my my voice is getting a little too scratching and I'm trying to get um, some water here so I can go on So what I've been doing recently is I'll take a group of four photos that I'm possibly interested in painting and I'll post those, um, those four photos to Instagram to allow my followers to vote on which one I should paint. And so I've been doing that over the last um, six paintings or so is that my, um, my followers have been choosing the ones that I paint on Tuesday night and then I paint, if I paint on a weekend morning or something like that, then I'll just pick whatever um, photo that I, I want to paint. So you can look on my Instagram feed and see um, the photos that have been up for a vote before. And so there is an exception where I have painted um, people on Instagram. Sometimes people send me their photos, but I don't tend to, uh, it would be really um, rare that I would um, work from one of those photos. I like to look through um, hundreds of photos before I pick one. So recently I did a, a painting of an Instagram follower named Shay, and she had sent me a photo, and I didn't, um, I didn't like love the photo that she sent, but I did look on her profile and found a photo that I liked, and uh, and then I put that one up for a vote, and it got second. And usually I paint both the the first and second choice, and that one I um, because of one second I painted it, and then the um, the ones the third and fourth place don't. Um, generally advance. The exception to that is that there was one guy that I had on for several weeks that he kept on coming in third place and um, people kept on saying, but you should paint a guy, you should paint a guy, you never paint a guy. And so I decided to do a post of only guys so that this guy had a chance to to win. And, um, and he didn't, again, he came in third place or fourth place. I can't remember, but, it, but in any case, so I'm no longer posting that photo. He's, um, he didn't make it back. He was eliminated from the competition and now I am, um, not going to paint him, but I have this guy, uh, Turksy that I, and painting, and then the week before I painted Taraj, um, whose photo I also got off of Sketchy. So just trying to um, get the rest of this color in, knock out the um, the white panel so I can really see what I'm doing. And then I will really start to focus on um, nailing the colors and the values. Let's just get a little bit of that darker, blacker purple here underneath the hand. That will help pull out the hand a little bit. Okay, so just a little bit of white left. I got a bit of greenish color coming in on the shoulder here. Okay, and when I say greenish, it's just relatively green um, next to the colors around it. And there's lots of purple in the shadow here. You're not going to probably see it on here, but um, on the camera, but I can see it. And when I photograph it, you'll, it'll probably be more apparent. I was trying to play around with a mirror tonight to see if there was some way that I could get my palette in the shot, but it was not going to work. I, I need a little more lead time to figure that one out technically. Ideally in the future I'll buy a, um, an SLR camera, a DSLR, and I'll have my phone and 
with uh, some software tricks, you can get both um, the image from both cameras on the screen at once. It's, it's a bit like uh, shooting from showing uh, images from two locations at the same time, but um, YouTube live stream, uh, their setup has gotten a little more sophisticated where you can use all kinds of different cameras and software to be able to show multiple things at the same time. Okay, I'm really going to start to uh, study this hard so I can do what I said is come in with some exacting brush strokes really correcting as I go along because I want each thing that I put in to be the thing, the final, so they don't have to revisit it so many times. I know that's kind of a nice dream. So let's see if I can get that to work for me. Okay, um, so Megan also asked if I am using the same brush um, and I am. I'm using a brush that's bigger than I would like to paint with because um, because that gets the best results to paint. Always pick up a brush that's bigger than what you want, but small enough to do the job. And it will have a fresher and a more painterly look in the end. And it, it'll just be more efficient because if you need to cover over large areas, a bigger brush does that um, uh, almost obviously, um, does that better than a smaller brush. So I am trying to get some of the smaller forms now in his hand. This I know I'm gonna have to come in quite a few times to get um, the hand to read properly. And his pinky finger you can see it has kind of a triangular shape up here where the these lines are converging a little bit more towards his fingertip and then it gets very square coming down so I and I don't really have the back of that form in yet kind of a purplish shadow so if I can get that right it will help the read of that finger and there's a little bit of orange swoop that comes around from the space between the fingers. Okay. And there is a reddish purple shadow on the underside here that cuts in for the, the, the wrinkles and padding of his, his I want to say paw, uh, of the palm of his hand. And I want to hit, there's a beautiful um, pinkish tones that are towards the palm of his hand that gets a little bit of reflected light. And let's see if I can see if I can hit that color. It's kind of a tough one. It has a lot of orange in it and a bit of white. Apparently more orange and more white and maybe yellow because that's what I said. You can lighten colors with yellow. That's too yellow. Okay, let's see. Yellow mixed with the Pranacridone red seems to be the thing. I, I studied, one of my teachers was, is a painter named Dan McCaw. He is a, a, an amazing figurative painter. And he always professed to Lighten, his co lighten your colors with yellows way before you add any white because that's the only way that you're going to maintain the intensity of the color because white does a number really, it drains the color out of paint very quickly. Okay, I think that, um, let me see if I am right in the corner there. Yeah, so I have his hand kind of at the wrong angle here. Let's see if I can correct that. Because it's much closer to the side of the panel than what I have it, and then it cuts in faster. 
something like that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> if I go ahead and I run the highlights uh, along the corners here, and this is this is a sergeant trick where he would throw in just these very uh, clear dashes of of color along the contour of the fingers and then just a few of them well placed really helps the whole thing read. I need to come in a little bit darker red here. But not that dark. Okay. Let's see if I can do this again. There. There we go. Okay. And it's nice fairly intense red that comes in on the under edge of the finger. Again, I want to keep that tapered shape to his finger if I can. And then it swings back with a little bit of dark, that dark purple accent here. I have to do this again because I drew it in the wrong spot to begin with. It's like I'm having a little bit of deja vu here. I swear I painted this already. Okay. And then the greenish neutral shadow on his chest helps, um, helps that form read. Okay. Have this little bit of um, the panel holder there that's getting in my way, so I'll have to deal with that later. Okay, sorry, I haven't been paying attention to these questions, so let's see. Um, okay, Megan asked where did I get all my pictures. I answered that. Um, and uh, Melania says, great work, thank you. And also asked about using the same brush. Okay, so I answered all those so far. Um, in the past, I've had some technical difficulty with the, uh, the live stream where... Um, Either the picture cuts out or the or the Wi-Fi drops out. And the one last week I I kept on talking even though the picture had froze for about a half hour. I finally looked up at people's comments and said, Oh, your picture is frozen for me. I said, Wonder why. Um, I probably had too many apps open and I didn't even think to clear them out before I started, but um, hopefully the quality of the information overcomes whatever uh, technical issues come up while I paint. Okay, so again, modifying this to find where things are. I have his chin line. I need to make it a little bit um, more um, acute coming up a little bit faster and getting coming in with those small changes of shape and color to make it feel like his skin is reading through the, the beard then it gets kind of a, like a light purple in here too colors coming through okay so right now I am starting to do my squinting and squinting is a very important tool for doing this kind of painting that um, allows you to re reduce a lot of the detail. Okay, I'm just going to indicate where that diamond is. Okay, that's too much paint to begin with, but... Okay, that's about it. And have this highlight here. I have to adjust that so that it feels like it's in the right place. Okay, so this is where I want to start to get very exact. Making sure that I paint one color next to another and really spend a fair amount of time mixing to get the right color and lay it down just in the right place. And, 
and I'm going to start comparing much more to my photo as I go along. So that line uh, under the the bags, the um, shape under his eye, is much more orange than when I had it. So I'm pushing that to to get a lot more color in there in that shadow. There we go. And then I, I'm i kind of blind to transitions. I see the, the detail and I see the dark shadows and the bright highlights. And I have a hard time seeing all that stuff that's in between. But it's that stuff in between that gets everything to read properly. And, and if you nail all those in between gray and changes of value, then you really start to feel like you are painting right on somebody's face because all of the forms are actually um, reading properly when you when you start to get accurate with that and get all those transitions in properly. So I need, I need to go a little darker and a little redder on the underside of his, uh, or on the side of his cheek here. And she has that little bit of a light yellow coming up higher. And then this goes lighter and pinker. So it's all about finding the relative changes in color too. It's not like, you can name a color, but the fact of the matter is sometimes these, these value and color shifts are so minute, it's not like you're actually painting that color. You're just really looking at what is the difference between an area right here and the area next to it. And sometimes you can see um, the changes in hue. Sometimes you can see the changes in value. Um, what happens more likely than not is that um, the tendency is to over exaggerate. You kind of hope hyper focus on that thing that you're looking at and you see a much greater contrast than what's actually there and you tend to, to paint it paint it that way. And it takes a, quite a bit of training to get yourself to um, to not exaggerate, to under exaggerate those kind of shifts so that they sit properly and read properly. Okay, I'm mixing quite a bit of paint now on my palette. I should not have any brush strokes that are starved of paint because I have plenty of paint to, to pick up. Okay, I've got to cut that ear um, a little bit closer to the head, which means I need a little bit more of that purpley color that's in the background. So ultramarine blue, a little bit of white, a dash of dioxazine purple. Yep, that's it. And all in one stroke. Perfect. Great. So squinting, squinting, squinting. And where his the shadow on his neck or this area that's it's not really shadow, but it's not in direct light. Uh, more of a half tone again. It really shifts to orange, more of an orangish red color before it then goes, starts to be a little bit um, burned out there in the photo. But I want to keep some of that because um, I think it's interesting that um, very white, bright part of his um, flesh tones and his um, collarbone and neck. Okay, I gotta find that, oops, oh, accidents happen, no big deal. I'm trying to find that purplish color in his neck here. Okay. So I've been painting for just about an hour now. Um, I had this sort of fantasy in my head that I would paint the whole thing in an hour, but um, that, that was not being realistic. So, but I do see that I could get this thing finished in an hour. Um, from now, so a total of two hours. So that's what I'm shooting for. And to get there, I have to be right more often than I'm, than I'm wrong. 
which means when I put down a brush stroke, I've I've done it um, to my to a certain level of satisfaction to match what's in the in the photograph. Sorry, get rid of that mistake. So right here, I can see the shift's orange. This little bit of indentation of the from the top of his chest here goes orange and makes this kind of shape here. Then if I really squint down, there's these uh, pinkish whites that come in here. And then the rest of his chest is pretty light, much lighter than when I had it. And that's a little bit better. Also, if I can, see how interesting these um, brush strokes are with the square brush. If I can keep some of that um, and still get the character of, the, of his collar, I, I will, because I think that'll add um, interest to the painting. Got the colors in his neck, which are kind of reddish orange here. shifts to darker, deeper reds and purples. Okay, so again, with the squinting, I can see I have something kind of off about the distances underneath the ear and along the, the chin. And I think just because the shadow underneath his ear, really, I haven't put it in, so I miss reading where that's going to be. Let's get that in. Okay. So, uh, a guilty pleasure. I have a confession to make that I, um, YouTube channel decided that, um, that I would be interested in watching a Bob Ross video. <laughs> and so I did watch a fair amount of it since I'm doing kind of, I'm channeling Bob Ross at the moment. So I just was, Kind of curious to watch it again, given that this is what I, I spend one evening at least a week doing. Okay, so right now this light is reading is just paint, and so I need to modify the edges and soften it up a little bit so that it is reading as um, light hitting that part of his chin right there. And part of that is don't I'm not darker and dark and orangey enough here on one side so it's not um, it's not sitting down properly on his face and so if as I soften up some of these edges then it will start to read a little bit better okay I think that's a little bit better and let's adjust his um, beard here to a little bit higher. <clears throat> and need to get in the, um, the hollow of his, his cheek here. Get just a little bit of shadow. So the light is coming from a little bit from above. So it's the underside of his cheek that gets the shadow. Oh, I want to be get a little more color in there. There. Okay, let's uh, refine this ear up here. That's throwing me off a little bit. And I'm going to throw in just some of the highlights that are on the tip of the ear. Just using the corner of the brush there. That's maybe a little bit too strong, but I can adjust that later. Just trying to get a sense of feeling of the, the light that's hitting the form there. And usually ears will be quite a bit redder than the rest of the face. And so I need to come in with a little bit stronger pinks than I have. Those 
what I put down just now is a little bit too dark, but that's that's okay because it's going to help me maintain the color in those lights by getting some of the color down initially. Okay. All right, so that's starting to feel, I'm starting to feel the forms in that ear. Pretty exciting stuff. And that, like I said, that's when those stuff, stuff starts to read. It's can be very exciting. See if I can carve into that beard shape a little bit. You may start to hear some crackling in the background. Of course, this is the 3rd of July. Everyone has excess fireworks and uh, and are um, want to start celebrating early. So you're going to hear that unless I decide to close the window. <coughs> Just want a little bit darker shadow on the far edge of that, of the form of his neck. And then a little more shadow. But did I decide that that's kind of purpley there? Yep. And that goes all the way off. Okay, so even though I like these, the brush work in here, it is not working for me because that um, that sh that um, flesh tones come much lower here, and so I have to adjust that. And it's more important to make it feel like flesh than it is to show off my brushwork, especially if that brushwork doesn't show off the flesh, and uh, I mean doesn't look like flesh. So, in a way that that's sort of a wasted effort. It needs to job number one look like what I what it is that I'm trying to paint, and then number two can look can be a little bit flashy if that's the case, but but not not when it's not doing its job. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna sit back and look a little bit his nose I don't have quite vertical enough Let's see if I can get the right colors on the brush for this and then just make it a little more vertical okay <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to start painting a little bit into his forehead to get some of those really subtle uh, value changes going on so that it does feel start to feel like flesh. Because right now it just feels like a, a messy wash of color. Okay, and... There's a lot of transparency here, which I think is a bit distracting. So I'm going to come in with slightly thicker paint. Um, for those who've listened to my videos before, my demos, I like to get my paint to be kind of a wet, creamy consistency. And usually it, it will have a lot of white in it in the light side. Um, and thus be fairly opaque, so you're not seeing all the these transparent washes. And that's, uh, that's kind of what I want there. Okay, he needs a little orange. There is kind of these marks in his forehead that look like little brush strokes, so I'm going to try to make them brush strokes. Okay, that is pretty far off from what I wanted. There's sort of this pinkish line that comes in that describes that is some of the wrinkles in his forehead. As I start to get those things right, his fore skin on his forehead will feel a little bit fleshier. Okay. Um, and get some of those marks in there. And getting all the wrinkles here hopefully in the right places. It's 
so next week I'm just announcing that I am not going to be able to do a live stream um, next week on Tuesday evening. I have um, previous plans, so but I have done a video of um, a muse and an artist on Sketchy named um, named uh, Bean Robinson, and go look at her work on Sketchy and on Instagram if you're curious. And I'll put a post in my description of her Instagram channel, Instagram page rather. And um, so I did a demo. It's not really a demo. It's a. Um, it's just some footage of me, about two hours and fifteen minutes of doing the painting. Um, there's lots of background noise. I'm listening to some videos on YouTube, so um, I'm just going to leave those in instead of making it completely mute because um, it's just, uh, I, I just find, I think it just adds something just even having background noise that makes it feel a little bit realer than if it's just dead silence. So, and it's a little hard to find music to take up the two and a half hours. So, I, or two hours and 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna leave all those sounds in. But there is, um, the, here I have the photo up and let's see if I can get it. It's on Photoshop. So I don't know if you can see it, but here's the finished painting of, um, of Bean that I did uh, the demo painting of. And that, um, that, yeah, that's a picture. I, it may not be the finished, finished painting, but it's pretty close. Um, that's what I do. It takes about two, a little bit over two hours to do the painting. And you can watch me in real time doing it. And I'm going to put that up probably 7 o'clock um, next Tuesday night on Eastern Standard Time. So two hours earlier than, than tonight. But that's because I'm also not doing it live. It's just pre-recorded. And so you're welcome to come in and watch that. I will um, try to post notices on Instagram before I post it to, so let people know that it's going up. Anyway, I've started to paint um, Bean's forehead by mistake, so I'm going to switch back to Turksy's picture before I get too far along putting Bean's forehead on Turksy, Turkey's, Turksy's head. <coughs> Shadows, I need to go a little bit deeper and stronger. This requires um, kind of enough paint on the brush and uh, having it wet enough to really have it come down as sort of a sharp, have a sharpness to it. Let's see, those wrinkles are a little bit redder there and they come across, okay. And if I get the changes in values and these sort of wrinkly shapes there, hit the tops of those with a little bit of white, then they'll uh, maybe start to read a little bit as folds in a face. There. Hold on. Try to get these tricky brush strokes working. Okay, and so what I'm missing is the turn in the front of his head here. It, I have it painted so it looks a little bit too flat and don't have the angle right and I don't have the changes in value that help that um, read properly. I think that's actually a little bit better now. This needs a little more adjustment. Um, and then the hairline does come down lower. I don't have it quite low enough. And I don't know if you would call this jerry curl. I, I don't know enough about hair styles to know what things are called. But um, so he has sort of these tight curls. OK. Um, so I think I have everything generally, vaguely, what I want it to look like. It just is. Um, not um, 
detailed enough in some areas. And, and this is something that also that I'm trying to be conscious of is not paint the same level of detail everywhere in the painting, but try to um, have much softer edges and areas blurred and um, not blend and and um, but but have the focal point of the painting be what's in focus and have almost everything else then be a lot vaguer. <clears throat> okay. Um, so uh, quest I, I'm re reading this question from Alanya. Um, are you using the same brush question mark? I said mostly right now and straight paint. Um, I'm not sure what the question straight paint is, but I'm not using any medium. I'm just using the the odorless um, thinner that's called Gamsol. It's a gambling product and it's a highly refined um, mineral spirit that um, that doesn't have any odor. It's sort of like low VOC paint. It doesn't have as much toxic um, fumes to it. I don't know if it has any toxic fumes. That's why I'm not saying um, any, but I don't want to misrepresent. <clears throat> this is where things get interesting as the the values drop, as things get nearer and nearer to his uh, shadows. Um, I for totally forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. Um, yep, that's what happens when I'm painting. I'm being very visual and <clears throat> then I can't remember. Oh, I was going to say as the values drop, then you start to see um, all these plays and color that are happening. So there's some greenish values in the shadow. There's some reddish tones and some inter pretty interesting shapes. This is actually coming up much higher or his lip is coming down lower, one or the other. I'm not sure I ever measured his lip, so I'm going to do that now. So again, people um, who are out there, if you're willing, please um, put a comment and let me know where you are watching from. Um, so you can see if I measure carefully that the middle of his divide in his lip right there is actually coming down much lower. So I need to adjust everything to make that work if I want to keep true to the value, true to the proportions in the photo. And so I'm pulling that nose edge down. I did measure the nose and that was in the right place. Base of the nose. Uh, it can be a little bit lower. Carve in. Okay, great. And so what I see what I have wrong is it's part of my natural skewing is that I have the direction of his mustache is like completely wrong. Wrong. That's kind of a harsh word but it's not, not where I would like it to be. And that's the, a little more politically correct there. Okay, not, not wrong, it's just not right. Okay. So now I've gotten the upper lip kind of in the right direction, and now that shadow, the mustache really does, it's kind of a shame, I really like the way the lip was coming out. Now I have to completely repaint it. But that's okay. Um, as you are more willing to fix things and move things around, just the more, the better you become at it. So repainting whole parts of the face can just happen very quickly if you, um, if you get good at it. Because you already have everything else down in the right place, the right shape, and then 
So coming in and getting the those pieces right um, is a lot easier. Okay, now I think I'm closer to the right spot, and that'll give it also the right character. So his lip there, and then darker reds around it. Okay. All right. So there's that the the height or the where the separation is. Got that measured correctly. It's still. Um, it's actually not too bad. It's, I was about to say it's still a little bit too high, but I haven't really completed his mustache. Put in the upper lip where it needs to be. Right around there. Put in the separation. Okay, good. Tuck the beard in. Okay, something looks really funky there, but I will keep on painting and see if it starts to jump out at me. I think some of the shapes in the nose weren't right. Okay. Okay, so what's probably wrong is, um, again, there's that wrong, is I don't have the, the profile of his face quite right yet. And then I have, I think his mustache shape just feels like it's, paint, and the way it paint, it's painted, it just looks wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. Okay, so I have uh, Courtenay, she is, or he is, watching from Georgia. But I don't know which Georgia that is. And it could be either. I have followers all over the world, so could um, it's most likely um, the state, the U.S. state of Georgia, because of the time difference. If you were watching from the Balkans, is it? Um, it would be like two or three in the morning. So, um, not to say that that's not possible. Uh, yes, from the USA. Okay, welcome and repainting, recorrecting some of these shapes here that I didn't have right. I can feel something really off here, and I think I don't have the lip quite described right yet. Once I, I repainted it, I kind of knocked out some things that I had pretty close to finish before. And there's a little bit of height of light edge on his upper lip that is should be right around there. Let's see if I can get this measurement. No, there's I have something off in there. I just not feeling what it is yet. Let's bring that separation line up just a little bit higher because even if I have the drawing off there and the measurement off, it felt right before. Okay, a little bit of gray, orangey gray here on the outer part of this lip. And that's what's going to make the lighter pink on his lower lip read correctly. And this is, I maybe can't repeat this enough, is where things transition from light to shadow, you often see there's a lot of hidden color there. Gives you an opportunity to throw in a little bit stronger color. Okay, that's starting to feel a little bit better. And then I also have to um, bring back his chin, which kind of got lost. Okay, I see I have my work cut out for me. I have a half hour and I'm kind of stuck on this. 
his mouth there. I think I'm just going to switch to a little bit smaller brush because that will help me get in a little bit more accuracy that I need. So here's a small, uh, that's maybe too stiff. Let's see. I have a small square. It's a flat, a small flat brush. Don't know if you can really see that. Where a little bit of delay, so it's hard for me to see if I'm holding this up in the right place. Okay. Um, did I freeze? Am I frozen? Hello? Can people hear me? Right. Um, up. Oh, I see. There's about a. Um, Wow, it's almost like a three or four minute delay kind of threw me off there. Okay, so not frozen, but um, really delayed. So whatever I'm saying, you're hearing a few minutes later, but that's okay. Um, all good here. Okay, moving and hearing, good. And um, 8357DG says that uh, he or she is from Alberta, Canada. Great. Um, okay. Really, I have to start to get in a zone here. I haven't quite got into it yet to really get this thing to start to work. And it's really about seeing some of these abstract shapes and copying them. Um, need to get more white down on my palette. Um, I use uh, three or four times as much white as any other color and that's because I am putting it about half of it in every mixture that I do on the lights um, side of the face really um, depend a lot on white I use a um, titanium white which is a nice opaque white I am at some point going to invest in some um, brilliant white which is a Gamblin product and it's made using um, just like a traditional titanium white but instead of linseed oil it uses safflower oil which doesn't have any um, yellow under color and so it makes the white appear so much brighter cooler and I think I would like that. So I am at some point going to buy a tube and play around with it and see if it is um, what I wanted. I'm getting a, a little bit off track here and maybe a, myself into trouble because I'm doing some blending with a smaller brush and it's not, um, not what I want to do, but maybe um, if I do a little bit to knock down some um, contrasty brush strokes where it doesn't contrast that much then maybe that will help the overall painting and again I said I did want to knock down um, make out of focus more things that weren't sort of the central focus focal point to create a little more interest in the painting okay so let's get this eye looking down in the right direction will be helpful. Give him a little bit more to the underside of his eye. To, I have this dark area which is really his upper lid that's in a little bit of shadow but it's starting to blend too much with his eyelash and then I don't have that um, indicated low enough so it's really in a way changing what your sensation of where his, his, well even though his eyes are closed, where his closed eyes are pointing. Got this nice orange stripe on his eyelid. Let's see if I can keep some of that. Oh, got a little bit too much white in the paint, but, so, but yeah, how did all that get in there? Let's see if I can get that maybe with a little bit of black in it too. There. And then come lighter. Up here. Oh, 
Okay. Let's really start to focus here. there's any areas that are diverge a lot from the photo that's the first things that I want to change so I can work kind of in a systematic way changing the worst offenders first and then getting to smaller and smaller um, differences until I start to get the right effects happening Um, again, the hair coming, the skin tones coming through the hair. Ooh. Okay, just going to close the window back here so that I can get the benefits of the air conditioning. Okay, great. So his head is kind of, I like to think of it like an egg shape. There's, um, the light is coming from above and hitting this area of his, of his um, forehead and reflecting pretty closely back at us. And so, and this gets the closest, mostly directly pointing towards the light will be the brightest. And as the shape, like an egg, comes down away from the light, it will get um, darker and darker. And it's really important that I have the values reading that way so that, um, so that you understand the, the overall shape of the head, which without getting that, it's a little hard to get a sense of the overall form. So I am going to work on that part of it, get these lights much lighter up here. Just going to scrub in the white there to begin with. Then I can come in with the fancy strokes later. Oh, got a little contamination there, but not to fret. I can cover that over pretty easily. And if I can dry brush a little bit the edge of hair there. And cover over that white there that's a little distracting. And then I'm cutting off a little bit of the back of his head. I mean, there needs to be space where the brains go. So if I don't have that right, then you pretty much intuit it that it's, that it's wrong, that it feels wrong. That's a little bit better. All right. Um, and again, I have sort of these interesting dabs of um, flesh and uh, bluish reflected lights up here. Okay. Let's see if I can get some of the blues up here too. Okay. So let's start doing that thing that I said. Let's really start to get some precise, precise brush strokes going here. transitions right get this little bit of an indication of a darker colors along the upper uh, flange of the nose so that we understand that form is painted downward and away from the light there. and then it comes down a little bit darker orange here So 
I'm barely going to get this lip to read properly. Okay, got a little bit of purple shadow on the leading edge here of the lip. And now, hopefully I have it in the right place that I can get paint these pinks here properly. I have to go lighter and brighter so the yellow comes in. And that stronger color that I said between the light and shadow. that orange out. Okay, uh, and then there's this shadow, very purple shadow underneath his lip here. Okay. Oops, what did I just do? Okay, I just messed all that up. Let's try that again. That's better. Just needed a little bit, be a little bit thicker to kind of stick there. And then if I come in with my lightest light here on the lip, just a little bit of edge there, then I can start to see it. Not pinker, but a little bit darker. Okay. I think if I correct this mustache, that's going to help quite a bit here. Yeah, that's starting to feel better. Okay, a little bit more decisive with the shadow here. Okay. Again, adjusting, adjusting. Okay, so I said what I wanted to do is change those things that were the most off. That's, there's some values in the forehead here that I don't have painted in that it needs. Okay. So, is anyone out there painting too? Or just watching? Watching quietly, very quietly. Okay, now I don't want to make this two and a half hours, so I am trying to really get this thing done. Okay, and carve into that fingernail a little bit. Huh. So if I have this measurement right, then I'm missing quite a bit of his forehead here. And, my, and it is right, so I have to pull that forward here, head here forward much more. There's a lot more paint apparently. And if that's off, I also have his hairline off. Get. I need a little bit of blue in this paint in his hair because it's just um, 
has a lot of violet and blue um, undertones. Let's get the edge of his hair there. Okay, and we need the lights in his forehead, which are kind of blue, kind of pink, I think more pink than blue. where I'm getting a little bit of blue in here. Come back the other way. I went a little bit too white and light. Okay. Okay, so I made got a lot of those lights in in the forehead. Change the give a, give a little bit more forehead here because I was moving the hairline over. So I have this area should be much narrower. I think let's carve into it from this side a little bit. I always say there's two ways to fix something that's wrong. You can fix the thing itself, or you can change everything else around it. And sometimes the right thing to do is to change everything else around it. And um, that is, it's easy to look at something and say, oh, I made that too light, let me make it darker. When the, sometimes the right answer is, um, is, oh, that's too light. Let me make everything else around it lighter so that it looks darker. So that's, that's the other way, and it's easy to forget that, oh, you have t another way of fixing it. It's all about relative colors and values. Okay, did I give him enough forehead yet? I think I'm still missing the mark here. It's coming out. And um, carving in here. Okay, I think that's about right. I just have to um, change the position of the nail too a little bit. light in his fingertip there. Yeah, and because it's a la prima, when I put down a brush stroke, it's picking up all the colors that are um, that are underneath that color. Now I need to put in this line that's where the fingertip is pushing into the forehead, and this is an area of great tension, so it should be a fairly thin, dark line. Gotta work back and forth to get that. Okay, a little bit of a water break here. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I can start to see that I can really get this thing to work in a few um, strokes, if I'm really, um, really putting down the right strokes in the right way, I'm not, not that far off. Yeah, what did I just do? <laughs> okay, so that finger is not, I just put down a shape that was totally not where it needed to be. That comes down lower, and that 
comes around, and then that goes into a darker red below that. Too dark, but yeah. And that comes around. And okay, so I'm painting how I always paint, which is progressive passes that get closer and closer to what it is and kind of failing miserably, miserably about putting it down right the first time. But this oil painting business of somebody's face and hand is a much more complex idea than, than tends to meet the eye. So it does take a while to get there. Should not put so much pressure on myself. Well, that's okay to put pressure on myself, but, oops, excuse me. Okay, is it starting to look like a hand? That's the question. Let me get the far side of that finger has some light, bright light that helps define it there. And just the very far edge of that finger has a nice defining dark edge. Oh, it's really humid tonight. Just working here. Um, there is an air conditioner vent that I sometimes open up so that my studio area gets enough cool air, but it must be closed at the moment. I can hear the air blowing, I just don't feel any. Okay, so um, 8357DG says, I'm painting badly, <laughs> laugh out loud. Okay. Well, as long as you're enjoying it, um, and as Bob Ross would say, there's no such thing as a bad painting. You're just, um, paint whatever you feel. And that's what's important. Okay, there's a mystery color that I don't seem to be mixing quite right. It's like a dark reddishy orangey color. Uh, an example, there's some coming down from the finger. Wow, that's a really, really off. Let's see if I can soften that. Um, well, I have this, this finger wildly off from where it needs to be. That's a little bit better, I think. So without getting crazy about um, painting every small shape in the hand to get the fingers to read properly, I'm gonna see what I can do what I see if I can do what I can to make it look like it's reading right. Got a bit of the thumb showing up here. I think I do want to put that in. Just, uh, okay. All right, all right. Again, this other finger here has some lights hitting it to help separate it from this one next to it. give up on this painting sooner than I thought just because my back is starting to hurt. <clears throat> okay, so 
Um, I'm going to try to get this painting done as much as I can because I'm not going to have time in the next week or so to really um, to really finish it. So however it comes out tonight is how it comes out. Well, I really don't, not feeling the character of his um, hand quite yet. Okay, that's a little better. Let's see if I get the silhouette of his folds of skin, his brow, and the top of his finger, and the under side of his finger. And the underside of the next finger. Okay. That's starting to read. That's starting to read. Okay. Um, let's bring his shadow from his ear over just a little bit more. And his neck line also over a little bit. Where's that blue when I, periwinkle blue when I need it? Um, that means I'm going to have to move his diamond ring over to diamond ring, diamond, um, what do they call that? Earring. Yeah, that's right, diamond earring. That just gets moved over. Okay. Huh. It looks interesting with two of them, but. Good, good, good. It's got a little bit of a, just a touch of black up there to define that part that's in shadow. Okay. Starting to look like something. those wrinkles in, getting, trying to get them to curve. This is coming towards us and then it turns down and then it drops even further back. So that's where it changes to reds and oranges. And I just can put one more light up here and I think then it will read Except I need to hit the darks on that shadow. There. Okay, and that fold is fairly pronounced there. Just again, just doing a lot of comparing. A lot, a lot. Come in with his curls a little bit here. Okay, okay, where am I? Just so many things need adjusting. And I am just about two hours in, so I'm gonna want that um, half hour more. I think only because I've had to get this hand um, thing resolved. Okay, and 
with it so I can see it. Sometimes you'll have a patch of, especially in the dark, a patch of color that's um, catching so much of your studio lighting that it's a little bit hard to see the color because it's just reflecting right back at you. And sometimes you just have to knock down the texture and the brush stroke to be able to start to see it. Otherwise, all that light reflecting off of it really distorts the, the true value of that area. Okay, starting to feel something. I'm going to put some random blues in here because I just feel like it should be reflecting some of the sky and the, the light back at us. Hopefully that will make it feel a little more uh, dimensional too. So these colors and values in this forehead are very close, but they're not quite just reading right yet. There's too much contrast in the transition, so I'm just softening that up. I'm softening it not by blending it, but by putting in intermediate brush strokes that, um, that hide the differences. like anything's terribly terribly off at this point it's just a matter of making some finer um, refinements let's just say and need to still feel a little bit of this anatomy it's a little bit of a turn towards us on that lower on that eye Okay, so half hour left. I am going to use every second of it. Okay, I'm saying okay a lot tonight. Okay. One thing when you start doing a lot of live videos is that you have to um, catch yourself saying certain things like um and okay, um, um, see, I can't, I can't help it. It's just I've been doing it for way too long. I'm not sure that I say um that much in my normal speech. I just think when I'm painting, both the combination of painting and being live streaming, I, um, I sort of get out of my own head in a way, and I find myself stammering a bit more um, stammer in real life. Okay. And there I am. Okay. I'm okay. Okay. So. I'm working on a, um, a new art rediscovered, at least it's one that I put on Instagram, but I haven't made a video out of it yet. And it's about the influence of uh, Mariano uh, Fortuny, a Spanish painter from the mid 19th century. Um, he died very young at the age of 36, um, but I noticed that there he had done some paintings of boys laying nude on a beach kind of like reminiscent of um, Soroya paintings um, but he did it much earlier than anyone else um, it's the only example I could find of, of or the earliest example I could find of an artist painting children 
um, nude or posing nude on a beach. And I thought, um, kind of interesting, but I thought the most interesting thing was um, that I'm going to sort of solve in this video is that John Singer Sargent came to the same beach four years later and painted virtually the same um, paintings, uh, similar poses, same similar um, painting techniques, still trying to capture the the outdoor lighting and the lighting effects in the painting. And so I thought, well, this is curious because it's not clear how Sargent would have seen these paint sketches of this artist who had just recently died. And so in the video, I follow along the location of some of these paintings and how it seemed very likely by the end, how, when, and where did um, John Singer Sargent see these paintings? Not, and it wasn't just those two paintings. There was other paintings too that he saw of this artist after his death that um, influenced several paintings that he did, including um, the, um, the painting El Jalejo, which is a large painting of a flamenco dancer in a flamenco performance. And it's, there is a painting by Fortuny. This is, this painting I've just mentioned is a, is a painting of John Singer Sargent's, but there's a painting by Fortuny that was done 20 or about 20 years earlier that um, is eerily um, similar to that painting. And again, uh, it's um, following where the locations of these paintings were at certain times make it um, possible, probable and possible that the, um, the paintings were seen by um, Sargent. So, but it was just interesting kind of tracking down the historical thread there because some of these paintings are now property of the Prado and then the Prado does a very good job of listing the provenance of the of the artwork whose hands it was in before and where it was exhibited and with some of that information I'm able to piece together um, when and where those paintings were shown okay so moving my diamond around a little bit because I wanted it to be a little bit over more and that's good Put some black around it so that it reads better. Great. Um, just keep on adjusting. Let's see. This I don't know why this lower lip is giving me so much grief, but it has. shapes here. And oh, okay, cutting the shape of this lip a little bit better. That's part of probably why the the mouth wasn't reading properly. Okay, I have four people in. I, I assume if I do enough of these and I promote them properly, I'll get a few more people um, tuning in. It's, it's going to take a while. My channel is fairly young, and so it takes a while before people hear, oh, yeah, there's this guy that does this thing every Tuesday night. In fact, if you guys want to share this with other artists that you know, then that would be helpful in getting the word out. Um, to come and tune in live on some other night, um, whoever you send it to. Okay, okay, and missing some smaller shapes here along the hairline. That comes across. Get a 
this has shapes of hair here and there. Okay. So missing some flesh at the bottom of this finger. be very quiet here for a little while. That's just going to help me concentrate just a little bit. I almost feel like I'm obligated to be, to be talking continuously, but sometimes you just need to shut up and paint. It's not just you guys that are tuned in now. This gets posted to YouTube. Some of my then live demos have been watched by um, more than a couple hundred people. And... Um, so in that regard, I want to make sure that they're as good as they possibly could be. Okay, there, there. Okay, I think I'm back, maybe. Let's see. Yep, I, uh, this happens sometimes with my Wi-Fi. It plays some dirty tricks on me. So, um, let me see, live stream stopped. I wonder how long ago that was. Um, it's spinning, but it looks like I, it looks live here. If someone can type um, and tell me if they're actually seeing this now, that would be helpful. But um, I'm gonna keep on painting and keep on talking. Hopefully I can get this, um, this to start reading and uh, I think we're back yeah okay but <laughs> yes it's live again <laughs> sorry So hope I didn't lose too many of you. Yes, it looks like there's one person here still with us. Um, that's okay. I am going to paint for about 10 more minutes and then I'm gonna call it a night and really need to just around this lip a little bit more. not getting the right shape around it and it looks like he's making a different kind of expression with his mouth than what there really is. Okay, that upper lip is doing this thing. Okay. Oh, that's a little bit better, I think. Just takes a few little changes to make it look right. And actually start to feel like real, a real lip. There we go. Yes, I'm back. Hi, Courtney. Okay, so we got one. I think you're the only one here at this point. That's fine. Uh, that makes me relax a little bit knowing that the whole world isn't watching. It's just a couple people here and there and I can just do what I need to do.
trying to get some of these subtler value changes in the face, orangey, darker reds, right here. There's almost, I can almost go pure orange right there, get away with it. similar right up here he has some a little bit of texture in his face there and I can turn that into little brush strokes and then quite a bit of white up here and I can start to get a little bit thicker with the paint that'll help accentuate the textures that are going on carve into those um, wrinkles a little bit, try to make them a little bit tighter. using a much smaller brush than I should, but um, I've almost lost all discipline at this point. Wow, that's really blue. <laughs> I've got a lot of blue in the hair, and I just pulled it into his forehead, and the forehead really should be much more orange. Um, what I'm looking for is that little bit of transition in the hairline, and I'm not quite getting it. Okay, that's starting to look a little bit better. Just the hair line here. to pick up a little bit. reflected light on the edge of his nose there, very faint light blue, so that's helping the fingers read properly.
Okay. And I'm going to keep on going for a little bit here. Still have about 10 minutes in the time that I set initially, but we'll see how I do with that. Okay, and I want to make a pretty clear statement where the edge of his beard is here in relationship to um, to the shoulder beyond that and where the shadow is. So I'm just going to put a little bit of orangey green here. And make kind of a sharp edge here so it really helps define it. Soften that up, that shadow beyond it. And sharpen a, and soften the shadow edge here so that it's going to read properly. And the same here. I need to come in with a little bit of the light up a little bit higher here to get the right edge to his jaw. It's a little bit better. Okay, so there's some very subtle changes in the forehead that I have drawn a little bit too strong. But it's just this light areas that go into a slightly darker pink. You can barely see them. And I have them a little bit too pronounced. But I need them to be subtle to get the forms to turn properly. Right here, shape of the forehead is a little bit different direction than when I have it. Five minutes here. Move this up, see where I am. I just have enough of the outer edge of this finger to really get the shape of it. in a little bit and then back out. Gets the knuckle. Just need just enough anatomy in this hand to make it feel like it's real. Starting to almost feel like they could be fingers.
I think it's getting close enough to those fingers that I can just go with them. Again, this is not a highly rendered uh, portrait masterpiece. It's just uh, for a little bit of fun. Let's just make that, um, this finger just slightly longer. Yep, that just feels too fat, that finger. Almost, almost. So there's some face there that um, I need to indicate just a little bit, even though you really don't see it in the photo. But otherwise, it looks like he's missing part of his face. So I just have to make sure that. Um, it's clear where it is. Yeah, that's a little bit better. The forehead comes around a little bit further. did put a little bit too much blue in his hair, and now every time I um, brush stroke against it, I'm picking up quite a bit of that. Okay, um, let's see where I am. Anything really wacky? play with this shadow shape a little bit. Have some a little bit of fun with it. Okay. And okay, bigger brush. I can do the last five brush strokes on this painting like like that's all there is. Like those were the only five brush strokes that I put down. So I'm getting close to the end here. Um, I want to thank everyone who tuned in. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, um, please, um, if you want notifications of when I'm um, either posting videos or doing these live demos in the future, um, subscribe and click on the notification bell icon and that you will get either an email or notification on your phone that I've um, posted a new video or that I'm going live and um, hope 
hope that you enjoyed this and um, thank you for tuning in just doing my last little bit here I'm gonna keep on going as long as I feel like I'm making some progress here um, which I maybe I'm not okay and um, let's see Yeah, so I can maybe make some touches offline, but um, thank you all again for tuning in, and have a great night.